It's final season, and many of you are probably studying for your exams right now. In fact, I have to go back to studying for mine once I finish filming this video. But in an era of online learning, our exams may look a little different. Instead of using tiny desks in lecture halls or sitting in classrooms, we're getting more take-home tests and online exams, and with that has come an increased concern about cheating. After all, there's no proctor or teacher to watch you take the test, right? Well, several companies have developed AI-based solutions to those concerns. From monitoring your behavior through your webcam to tracking your keystrokes, these companies claim that they can tell whether or not you're cheating during an exam using automated remote proctoring. But how true is that, and how does it even work? Let's find out. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and welcome to the wonderful world of artificial intelligence. Consider subscribing if you're interested in learning more, and smash that like button so that I know that you enjoyed this video. Also, let me know in the comments if you've taken an exam with online proctoring, AI-based or otherwise. All right, let's get into it. So online proctoring has actually been around for way longer than I thought when I set out to make this video, around 10 years now. And the original approach was pretty straightforward. You would log into your exam using the online proctoring software, and they would connect you via video to a remote proctor who would watch you take the test. Ideally, they would be familiar enough with the exam to be able to answer any questions you had about it, but just like an in-person proctor, they primarily served as a cheating deterrent. Subsequent versions of this software incorporated the ability to track you as you took the test, from monitoring your video to monitoring your online activity. Are you Googling the questions? Did you just copy and paste something into your essay? All of that activity would be visible to the proctor, who would use it to determine whether or not you were exhibiting cheating behaviors. From there, it wasn't a huge leap to automating the role of the proctor. After all, the software already records and monitors all of your activity, so the next step would be to train an algorithm to detect whether or not an activity would be considered cheating. Other functionalities, including facial recognition and location tracking, were also added to make sure that you were in fact the person who was supposed to be taking the test. And some companies even offer audio analysis to make sure that you're not talking to someone else off screen who's feeding you the answers, as well as a manual offline human review to catch any errors that the algorithm may have made. And now there are several companies that offer these services, predominantly to universities. They've been picking up steam since well before coronavirus forced everyone towards online learning. After all, if you've ever been in a huge lecture, something like Psych 101 at Cornell that has like a thousand people in it, you know that it's functionally impossible to determine whether anyone is cheating because there's so many students and so few teaching staff and proctors. Additionally, exams are often offered in the evening, so for commuter schools, it may make more sense to offer an online exam so that students don't have to either stay late on campus or return to campus in the evening. In these scenarios, automated online proctoring is extremely useful. It takes the burden off of teaching staff to have to keep track of all of the people taking the test, can simultaneously monitor hundreds of students, and allow students who don't necessarily live on campus to take the exams from home. But how does the software tell if you're cheating? Well, these are all proprietary algorithms, so I obviously can't pull back the curtain to show you, but there are two overarching strategies that I've seen used. First up is identity verification, or making sure that the person who's supposed to be taking the test is actually the person taking the test. This is often done at the beginning of the exam, usually by comparing your face in the video feed to a photo on record from your student ID, but can also be done throughout the exam. Second is activity monitoring. This includes anything from eye tracking to making sure that you're focusing on the screen, to disabling copy paste so that you can't copy something from outside of the exam into it, to analyzing your audio to make sure that someone else isn't telling you the answers. Anything deemed by the algorithm to be a suspicious behavior will trigger an alert, either for the instructor, for the student, or both. The outcome of that alert could range from anything from a human review of the alert itself to disciplinary action on the part of the instructor. In short, the software detects cheating by being trained either through simpler algorithms such as pattern matching or through more complex algorithms like deep learning algorithms to track your identity and your activity throughout the exam and make a continuous prediction as to whether or not you are cheating. Now, you might be wondering how an algorithm decides whether an activity is suspicious. The answer to this question honestly deserves its own video, as past work in machine learning has showed that it's very hard to make a training set that doesn't have bias to it, and it can be very hard to extrapolate the results of your model to the real world. As an example, I'll include a link in the description box to a preprint that tried to detect deception using GATE. 
The authors faced considerable criticism when this preprint was originally uploaded to Archive, and they've actually since updated it to address some of the limitations of their technology a bit better, because the training data that they generated was extremely contrived and didn't seem to have a clear real-world parallel. And in fairness, this is a challenge for most of the work in this field, because determining the intent behind an action is difficult for humans, let alone algorithms. So the software likely relies on a set of training data that has been labeled, where some examples represent cheating and some do not. It's hard to know more past that. Now, let's jump back to the question in the title of this video. How well can automated online proctoring identify cheating behaviors? Obviously, most of these companies, as well as the schools that use them, claim that they can identify cheating behaviors better than you can in normal in-classroom exams, as well as in online exams. I would believe that claim to be true, but would also question any accuracy statistics that come with it, because it's unlikely that you can reliably quantify how many people actually cheated on a test. More broadly, I think that online proctoring is something that we're all going to have to get comfortable with going forward. I don't think it's universally good or bad. After all, there's a reason why we normally have people proctoring exams when we take them in person, so it doesn't surprise me and it does make sense that you would have some analogous system that can perform that for online education. And automated online proctoring is particularly useful right now when we literally cannot have proctors in the room with students. However, it also has faults. Students of color have complained that the facial recognition system can only identify them in specific lighting, which you may not have access to wherever you're taking your exam. And these systems can require more bandwidth than students may have access to. If you can only take your online exam at the library, you might not be able to download the necessary software to even take the test. Granted, a lot of these things are also challenges for online learning overall. There have also been some concerns about data privacy. After all, the system is recording you while you take a test. And in the US, we have a federal law called FERPA, which basically requires that universities maintain the privacy of your educational records. But I haven't found any claims of data mismanagement or misuse so far, and it does seem like these companies are doing their best to comply with FERPA. Now, I'll say I personally haven't used any of these systems in any of my online exams so far. I have one final this semester, and while it is online, as far as I know, it is not monitored in any way. But in short, I think a lot of the work that an AI proctor does in detecting online cheating isn't actually in the algorithm itself. It's in the psychology of having someone or something watch you while you take a test. And while this version of proctoring may be different from what we're used to, it's likely not going away anytime soon. So you definitely shouldn't take it as like a challenge to fool the AI or anything. It's not worth it. If you want to learn more about how artificial intelligence is used in schools, you can check out this video up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here to do that. If you'd like to learn about my PhD life, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks as always to all of my patrons, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye.